Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the first in the Hello World series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. In this series, we're really trying to make some super simple examples that a beginner can easily get using, even if you're not using the same assembler as I am, so that hopefully you can learn how to make a very simple example, get something on the screen that you can control, and how to build a file and actually get it to the system itself, because sometimes we'll need to create disk images and things like that. Now, Today, this episode, we're going to be doing the X68000. Now, this is the machine by Sharp that really only came out in Japan, so maybe it's not one you're familiar with, but I find it a lot of fun, and hopefully you will too. Today, we're going to learn how to get a super simple Hello World example on the screen. So let's go over, have a look at our code, and see that happening today. Let's close this down here. So here's our code example here, and we're going to be compiling this, and it will show Hello World at the DOS prompt. So if I just start up my emulator here, Now you can see the emulator starting, but if I press the end key, it will fast forward a bit. I get things going a bit quicker. And you can see hello world here after a, a command prompt run prog x. So I've got a batch file here. If we just do a DII, you can see I've got various programs here that are, this is effectively a minimal disk from the human 68K operating system. And if I just do type, I think I can do type, auto exec. typing quite badly there. You can see the contents of the file here. Now, uh, don't be fooled, it looks like DOS. In some cases it works like DOS, but it isn't DOS. So um, some commands are the same, some are completely different. But as I say, just, uh, just bear that in mind. So anyway, you can see we got a hello world example onto the screen there. Now let's see our code and let's see how that actually happened. So here's our basic code here. We've got the loading of a string message here. Now in my tutorials, I always use a character 255 terminated ASCII string. So you can see that here. We're running a routine called print string, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. Now after that, we've got an exit command which returns to the operating system. Now you'll see that this is rather an odd command. It just states DCW defines a word FF00. Now these are what's known as the F-line emulation. Now, the 68000 processor can perform a special jump, a bit like an OST on the Z80, where any word received starting with an F in nibble, of course, um, will actually be executed by a specific part of the ROM. <laughs> and that's how these commands are being processed by the operating system, effectively. So this is our return to the operating system call here, this, um, this by FF00 here. But we're going to use a different one to actually print our characters. Now you can see our print character routine here, and we're extending that into a print string routine here. So this print character routine is really the key to everything. We're just backing up all the registers for safety here. And then we're stripping out the top byte because this command actually uses a word, but we don't want to do any Japanese. We just want to stick to English for today. So we're just stripping out the low byte here. And then we're moving that word onto the stack here. And then we're calling effectively the command putcher which if we look up the manual reference is the command FF02 here. So this is a DOS call to put char, and that will take a word off the stack because we pushed a word onto the stack here and it will show it as a character to the screen. So that will print just a single letter. Now, once we've actually called this, it will use the item we pushed onto the stack, but it doesn't consume it. So that item is still on the stack. So we just add two to our stack pointer, effectively popping an item off the stack, if you will. And then we restore all of these items here. Now, of course, if we forgot this command here, we'd get in a bit of a pickle because we'd load in all of our other values in here and we'd end up with the wrong return statement and things would, would probably crash. So we don't want to do that. So um, we do have to make sure we correct the stack here and make sure everything's back to the way it should be when we return. Now, as I said, the print character routine in all of my tutorials just prints a single character. We then extend that to make a print string routine. And you can see that just here. We just repeatedly read invites from A3 here, which is where we loaded our message. Check if there are 255. If they're not, then we print the character to the screen. If they are, then we return. We just keep repeating around until we've shown our character. Now, there may well be better ways of doing things on these systems we're going to be covering in these tutorials for printing a string, but I really just try and keep things as simple as possible. This is the easiest way to get a single character onto the screen and then extend that to a string. And we'll look at more complex things later. So there we go. Now, so we've also got a new line command here. It's very easy. We just print character 13 followed by character 10, and that will start a new line. We run that just before returning to DOS here. But this is really an entire program from the point of view of the code. One thing I will point out, though, is you'll see that there's the hello world string here, which is some inline bytes here. 
we've got an even command here because the 68,000 processor does need to be on even byte boundaries. It can't be halfway through a word when you've got the code. So um, that's just a, a safety there to avoid any problems. So that's um, the end of our code here. So this is pretty straightforward, but we do need to build it. We actually need to create it as a disk image and load that disk image into our emulator. And for that, I use this Basim X68000 bat file here. So this is what I used today to compile. You saw me, I pressed F6 here, and then I just select from this list, and that will run one of the batch files, in this case, the X68000 one. And let's look at what that X68000 routine is doing. Well, some of it's a little bit complex, and we're just going to skip over it, because a lot of this is just error checking to check for mistakes. And we don't need to do that. If you're just writing your own script, you can just forget about that. This is the command that's compiling the ASM file into a viable binary. And then here, we're using this command ndc to add that file to a disk. We'll look at that in just a moment, though. So the first thing we're doing is we're compiling the file. Now, when I run this script, this build file label here, this will actually become the name of the assembly file. So it would be x68 hello world ASM in today's example. If you weren't using my batch files, which you can because they're all available for download on my website. But if you weren't and you were writing your own, you would need to put something, the name of your assembly file here. I'm then specifying the process to type here, m68000 here. I'm specifying to check labels. This means that the assembler will check if one of our commands is in the position of a label and it will warn us that it looks suspiciously like we've done something wrong there. So that's very handy. It saves you some time if you're prone to making mistakes like I am. So hopefully that will be something worth doing. We're disabling case sensitivity because I am very poor at maintaining my case. I'm sorry, but I am. So um, I need all the help I can get there. I'm defining a symbol called VASM. This is just in case I decide to change assemblers later. You don't need this. It just allows for conditional code that will only compile on one particular assembler in case you are moving around things. The listing file is a bit more important if you're getting clever. Now, the listing file will output the source assembly and the output binary. And this is quite handy if things aren't working how you expect. One way that they commonly didn't work as I expected was um, with regards to optimization. It turned out Vasm was optimizing the code in places and it was changing absolute code into relative code and it was um, changing load zeros to clears and things. Now um, that's great from the point of view of making efficient code but when you're actually trying to test commands and in some cases make the commands malfunction because you're relocating code and things it wasn't working as I expected and it turned out the code is being optimized and so by looking at that listing file you can figure it out. A listing file is not going to be essential in the early stages, but if you're doing clever things with labels and recalculating things from labels, sometimes you might be confusing your assembler. And so that's a good thing to have for when you're having problems and you don't know why and you need to start wondering if maybe your assembler's malfunctioning a little bit. So it's worth having if your assembler supports it. I'm then creating a symbol called build x68. This is for my multi-platform code. You don't need it for the example we just saw, but you may need it for the one we're going to look at in a moment. And then we're specifying to output oops, output an X file here. My mouse will behave. This is the executable format of the X68000. You remember I said it's not a DOS machine. Don't think you're running any .exe files on this because you won't. X file is the format you need. And we're outputting a file called progx. Now the author of Vasm was very kind and was actually, actually programmed the X file support in for me. I was just sort of casually asking about a few other things and mentioned I was using the x68000 and he very generously um, added support for this system for me so, so that was very extremely kind of him to add support for this because um, otherwise we'd have had to create our own headers so um, and that's actually what this piece of code was designed to do this would create an x file from a raw binary but we don't need that anymore because he very generously did that so thank you very much now once we've created a binary file we have an executable program but we need to get it to our emulator somehow and the way we do that is we are going to attach it to a disk. Now I have a blank disk image I created with my emulator before. And then what I do is I delete any existing file with the same name. That's what the D command does with this NDC tool. And then I attach the new file, adding it to the disk. This updates the disk with the new file. And then I just start the emulator. And I've configured the emulator to automatically load the disk. And the disk is configured via that auto exec bat to automatically start the program. That gets things going nice and quickly. You'll see I've got some error checks here, and if the assemble failed, I skip overloading the emulator because obviously we don't need to see that. 
So that's the basic example, how we can compile it into an, an, a progx file and load it onto our disk and run it on our emulator. But as part of these tutorials, I always add a second example. And the second example is how to create a simple version with some very easy debugging tools. Now, I don't go into how the tools work. I just give you the file. You can, of course, download all these files from my website and all the compiling tools. But um, what this does is it gives us a monitor command, which will show our registers, and a memdump, which will output an area of memory to the screen. So these will be handy if you're getting started, if you're trying to, for example, turn on the graphics mode, which was something I was trying to do in the early stages, and maybe it's not working as you expect, or maybe your graphics are malfunctioning, and you just need to check the state of some registers or some areas of memory. This will help you out. So um, these are just something I create on every system I'm learning with, and I wanted to make them available to you in case it helped you out getting started. So let's fire this one up today and let's see what it does. And it's starting up now. I'll just press end and fast forward that a bit. There we go. And you can see here we've got the hello world messages before. And now we've got hexadecimal dumps of all of the registers here. And also here we've got a dump of some of the memory here. And so this is just something that maybe will help you out if you're getting started. Um, if you're like me and you're programming a lot of different systems, uh, some of the emulators I'm using don't have any kind of debugging tools. I don't think this one does, but um, having some simple tools that you've written yourself allows you to easily debug systems, even if you're not able to do so within your emulator. So hopefully these will help you out a bit if you're just getting started. And if they don't, well, you, know, you can have a look at the code and you know, maybe they'll help you understand a bit more of how to do some 68,000 programming with regards to converting decimal to hexadecimal, things like that. Anyway, those are the examples I wanted to show you today. Now, if this has tempted you in any way to the x68000, then please take a look on my YouTube channel or my website because I've got a playlist of x68000 tutorials already. This is the not the first, this is the most simple, but it's not the first. I've already got existing tutorials, how to do graphics mode, and we even made those um, debugging tools work in the graphics mode. So please take a look at that. And I've done sprites and I've done music and all kinds of other things. So please check that out if you want. Now, I hope you found this interesting. As I said, if you go onto my website, you can download the um, development tools, everything from Notepad++, the assembler and the emulator that you've seen today. You can also download all of these samples as well as all the others. Anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you'll enjoy playing with the X68000 because it's a fascinating system, especially if you've never heard of it. Please just try out a few games on it even. Um, anyway, I hope you'll enjoy this. I hope you'll give programming a go on the 68000. If the X68000 doesn't look like your thing, please follow along for one of the other videos because we're going to be covering the Amiga, the Atari ST, the Neo Geo, the Genesis. You name it, we're going to be covering it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and goodbye.